I'd like to talk about normal forms now in relational tables. Normal forms really are the power behind uh, the advantages of relational tables because they allow us to optimally split data and then give us a way to combine it back together in an efficient manner. Now, a lot of people, when they create relational tables, if they don't understand normal forms, can make them such that you do more harm than good. You get poor performance and redundancy and you have difficulty in maintenance and the tables don't work well. Everybody has a story of the database being wrong and things getting lost. Uh, used to be much more common than it is now. But most of these problems come from either not understanding normal forms and functional dependencies or not being careful to make sure that your data adhere to the requirements of normal forms and functional dependencies. So normal forms are good because we can reduce the total storage. We can isolate pieces of the data so we can change values easily. And uh, it's easy to re retain important data. If things get deleted in one table, information that isn't related to the stuff we want to delete is still saved in another table. And it makes operations relatively easy to code. We have an example here we'll follow through where we have tables that are non-normal forms. This is a common spreadsheet-like uh, organization. I have here some parcels, and the parcels have aldermen and townships because they're in a specific township, and then their owner information. And as with earlier examples, we see here that we have repeat columns. We have multiple owners for some parcels. And so we can have an owner ID and an owner name and an owner address, and that can be repeated. And you'll see these uh, the table's too broad to be linked here, but you'll see these then re repeated throughout. A person can own multiple parcels or parts of multiple parcels. So Prestovich here, with their same address and owner ID, appears for two parcels. And you can also have a lot of empty space because there's a parcel with one owner, as other parcels have many owners. And so we want to turn this unnormalized spreadsheet-like for many people natural form of data structure into a relational data structure. Why should you care about normal forms? Well, <clears throat> lots of data, excuse me, <clears throat> are delivered in normal form. So soils data gives you basically their data in a set of tables, a bunch of tables, and each of the tables are in normal forms and then linked by keys. So they show you the primary key and they'll show you foreign keys for these various tables but they're in normal forms because of the advantages in normal forms. Same thing with census data. They have a series of tables, many tables they give you, or other people generate tables attached to or designed to be attached to the U.S. Census data, and they take advantage of the properties of normal forms and keys to create these data and link these data. So there's something you need to know about. In order to understand normal forms, you need to understand keys. We talked about this earlier. They're an item that uniquely identifies every row in a table. So if I know the value of a key, I know the value of every other item in that table. And remember, we have candidate keys. There are many individual or multiple taken together columns that may uniquely identify the rows. We have to identify a primary key, the candidate key we're going to use as the key for the table, and then we stick with that primary key. The other concept you need to know about is functional dependencies. So if you know the value of a column, for example, then you know the value for another column, that it comes exactly always the same in that pairing. If I know, for example, that a, a particular part on a particular car is blue, then I know what model the car is because only that model had that blue colored part. So if I know A, I know B, and that B is another variable in another column. That's functional dependency. So the value in B is functional dependent on A. If I knew that a part is red, that same part, then I know I have a different model. So the model depends on that part color in my example here. And because a key uniquely identifies the row, every column in a table is function dependent on the primary key. So keys are important because it's how we join tables, remembering that we have to join them in a certain direction. 
to get that one-to-many relationship or one-to-one -one in a key. Making normal forms is a process of breaking up the information into tables such they are naturally grouped. And each table has a key, and the tables can be related unambiguously from a primary key to a foreign key. We typically put tables into what are called third normal forms. There are various normal forms we can go through. I think fifth or sixth normal forms have been defined, but most of the utility comes and most of the, the use that we put tables to is available in third normal forms. So keys, items that uniquely identify a row. So here, state can be a key in this table, right? There's a unique number of states, a unique ID for each of the states, but region or size or population can't, right? If I know it's Arkansas, I know it's in the southern region, or if I know it's Alabama, I know it's south. But if I know that it's in the southern region, I can't tell if the size is small or large, right? Because um, I have west here, large, and west small. So my values in region don't define the values in size. Size isn't functionally dependent on region. Same thing. <clears throat> population isn't function dependent on region. West has a mid value and West has a small value. So knowing West, it doesn't tell me what the population is. And similarly, I can look at all these others. They don't basically define proper keys because they're, though all the other items aren't functionally dependent on them, right? So you want to look at tables and be able to say, well, what are the functional dependencies and what are the candidate keys? You could look here and say, is this a key? And it, it perhaps could be, although we get a red flag here because they have multiple values for a, a, given, uh, a given type here. So I have um, two and two. I have multiple instances that have the same value. And that happens also with threes. So the only way then I can have a uh, functionally dependent is if this value here tells me exactly what this value here is or this value here. So in this case, I have a 2 and a 2, right? And this is BR and this is A. So class isn't functionally dependent on type. I have 2 in both these locations and I have different values in class. So I don't know the value of class when I know the value of type. Same thing for size. I don't know the value of size when I know the value of type. Same thing here for color. I don't know the value. So class and size and color aren't functionally dependent on type because there are instances where I know the value of type and I still have different values for color, right? So if I know column A, I don't know column B from type to class or type to size or type to color. It's just, it's not function dependent. If I look at shape, at least for the two, two is square and two is square. Well, so far it's function dependent. This is, you know, one and three. Those are unique so far. Three is square here and three is square. So it's function dependent. Up oh, two is round. Two is round here and two is square. So because there's this one different value, I know that this isn't functionally dependent on type. And so I can go through and check and see for the repeat values in any column, are those values different? Right? If they're the same for all of them, then it's function dependent. Of course, these are unique values, the 1 and the 4 and the 8, so I don't have to test them. And so I can look and see if there are function dependents. Now, we often define an item so that it is a key. So we know that everything in our database, if our, the entries are correct, that everything's function dependent on that. The social security number should be unique for every individual in the United States. If it's not, because it's because there's some fraud going on or somebody made the rarest of errors and assigned two social security numbers, the same one to two different people. So uh, the social security number is a good example. University student IDs, they should be different for every student. And it's in the setup of the process by which we assign these that we ensure they're different. Someone has a master list somewhere, and when they assign a new student ID, they go to that master list and pick one that hasn't been assigned. Same thing for a parts ID number. These are created and guarded so that they are a proper key. But we may have other data sets where we have proper keys where they aren't 
developed, but rather they're found. Um, so we want to ask when we're designing a table, will or can we ensure that this item will uniquely define the row? If the answer is true, then that can become the primary key for the table. It's good to be able to look at these tables and do the process that I went through earlier to say, well, okay, can I look if there's functional dependencies in the found data? In this case, we know it's not true because we have two in BR and two in A, so it's not function dependent. Same thing as we went through, we have two in small, two in small, well, so far so good, two in small, that works in this table. So I had these values of two, so so far, um, size is function dependent on type, three large, three large, well, it looks like it, right? So these values are function dependent. Um, so for size and type. So uh, we can go through and identify that. What about type to shape, right? So I did type to size, I guess now is size function dependent on, I'm sorry, is type function dependent on size? Here I have a value of size that's large and large, and they're two different types. So type is not function dependent on size, even though size is function dependent on type. These aren't necessarily reciprocal. Um, type shape, right? So here again, I check the ones that are repeat square, square, round, no. So shape isn't function dependent on type. So you basically ask yourself for each of these values in an item, if I know the value in another item, can I say the value in the second item? Right, so I'm doing this test, and if there are repeat versions, I have to ask, well, for those repeat versions, does the second item match across all values of those repeat versions? Um, so here the functional dependencies are type to size and length is dependent, I'm sorry, class is dependent on length. So if I know length, I know the value of class. So we can test for functional dependencies. Now usually we do a thought experiment. So we say, do two things always vary together by the way the data are structured? For example, if I have unique parcel IDs for a set of parcels within a city, then I know that basically within that city, if I have a parcel ID, I have anything else that's defined by that parcel. So if I know the parcel ID, I know its size. If I know the parcel ID, I know its owner. If those things are defined that way, if I have um, basically any variable that I know in the correct assignment, something is functionally dependent on that variable, then I can basically um, no, my functional dependency exists, but I have to guard and make sure that that relationship is true across the entire universe of values the variable can take. Now, there can always be mistakes and break that functional dependency. You try and guard against those, but you're looking in sort of the true world if things are assigned correctly, and then in data entry, you try and put sideboards so those mistakes can't be made. Another thing is that Null sometimes confuses people, and null basically is just a spanner in the works. It makes a column impossible to be a uh, key because null matches anything and it matches nothing. So you can't have nulls in a key column, and nulls basically play havoc with functional dependencies on that column. You can have a column that's function dependent on another column that has nulls, that's not a problem because nulls don't match anything. But that means you can't really have the null be a key column if there is a null in that column. So nulls are just kind of a mess. Um, so what pair, <clears throat> what items can uniquely identify rows? Sometimes you need a pair of items, right? So um, in this case, for example, O cell by itself can't serve because you have two values of O cell, and the num t is the same, I'm sorry, is different here. So I have a one and a nine. Um, the same thing here, a to 11. So O cell doesn't work. Again, the CLR, the num p and the SPLM don't work. So we have to look at two columns together. And that means for every unique combination of these two values, do I know, can I make a, a two column key? 
and some data set, some tables have two column keys. So I want to functionally, basically uniquely identify the row by a set of two keys. Um, so we're going to go through this table to create normal forms. And the first thing you do is to go from any table to a first normal form by removing the repeat columns. Now it seems odd at first because we had a lot of redundancy when we go from first from unnormalized to first normal form, but it's just a step on the way. So what we'll do is we'll identify the repeat columns, in this case the owner ID, owner name, and owner address, and we'll make a copy for each of those values copying the non-repeat values. So here I have three owners, right? Owner ID, owner ID, owner ID with the intended information. And I will create then columns here that are unique for those, but that means I have to add additional rows, one for each of those, right? So there's one for the first owner at this partial 2303, one for the second owner, a row at this partial 2303, one for the third owner, partial 2303. And so I'm actually taking that data from the columns and kind of stacking it into extra rows. So this is, it's easy to code queries. I just have to look down, for example, in the owner ID, one uh, column. I don't have to look in multiple columns, but this can still give you slow searches and you have more data and you have redundant data. So we have more rows. So we go to second normal form by basically splitting that table into multiple tables, making sure I have keys that allow me to join them back together. And so we'll go to a second normal form table where every non-key attribute is function dependent on a primary key in each of the tables. And this key is an item that uniquely identifies each of the rows. And so bearing in mind my functional dependencies, I say, well, I need to split this and I need one or greater column to form a key. And when I look, there's sort of parcel data here and township data and owner data. And so I can split this into three sets of tables, the parcels data, where I have all the information associated with the parcel, the owner data, all the information associated with the owner, and the township data. So I look at the functional dependencies. I see, look, I have partial ID, I know alderman, partial ID, I know town hall address, partial ID, I know township name, when I look at this, right, if I have parcel ID, I, all the ones with that parcel ID have the same alderman and the same township and the same township name and town hall address. They have different owner ID, so owner ID isn't function dependent on parcels, but I could break this parcel ID up and have this other information and then this owner ID up and then a way to connect the two. And so when I go through these functional dependencies, I say, look, I, I put the parcel stuff together and I put the owner stuff together. And then I have a table that allows me to connect those two. So it's this sort of parcel ID, owner ID. So I take these two columns and put them in a table and that table allows me to connect my other two tables. So again, by the functional dependencies, these fall out. And the functional dependencies, these fall out. But the connection of parcels to, to owners is in this table and I want to preserve that and I preserve that then in its own table. So in splitting, you're saying, okay, I have these two sets of functional dependencies that are defined. And then there's also, well, when I pull apart the table in order to get it back together, what connects those two? And so they're the columns that are the key columns for my two tables that come out that are the cluster of functional dependencies. And that's typically the way it works when you split a table you may need another column that crosses and connects those two primary keys. And so now I have three tables, and this is a great improvement because if I want to change any owner information, for example, if an owner moves or gets married, they change their name or they change their address, I'm going to only have to go to that one table and in one instance change that value. And yet if I do any linkage, it still gets the proper owner ID to the proper parcel and the proper alderman and township. So I've made my task much easier. I've removed redundant information from that first normal form table, and I've isolated the information that I have in these three tables. So this is a much better uh, organization with the 
caveat that if I want to combine the data, I have to do this join. And you don't see the advantage that much in this table because it's a relatively small table, but think of a table with hundreds of thousands of entries. So these redundant entries for parcels may double or triple the size of that table. Instead of having uh, basically 100,000, I might have 250,000 records. And so if I can go back to the 100,000, that's a substantial reduction. And then I can have real time and, and volume data savings. And so it is a real advantage. Also, the ease in update is another real advantage. Well, once I'm in second normal form, then the final version is in three normal, third normal form, and we get rid of what's called transitive functional dependencies. Basically, what we do is we look at the tables that we have and say, are there any functional dependencies in those? Let's remove those. And so um, we're saying in a transitive functional dependency, if B is dependent on A and C is dependent on B, then we know C is dependent on A, and what we want to do is split those into separate tables uh, because if they're transitive functional dependencies, it means that those things can vary independently. And we want to split that. Now, there's none here because if I know owner ID, basically these are uniquely dependent on it, and none here. But there are here. So if I know parcel ID, I know alderman. Or if I know parcel ID, I know township ID. But a bunch of things depend on township ID, like the alderman name, in the township name and the town hall address. And so in this table, looking at this table, it seems like, oh, these might be functional dependencies. We're going to have different values for aldermen that go along with the township IDs and go along with the township name. So there's functional dependencies there. Really, these are all kind of functionally dependent. If I know the township ID, I know the alderman and the town hall address and the name. Um, and so I want to split that, right? So if I know parcel ID, I know the township ID and the alderman. If I know township ID, I know township name and town hall address. So there's kind of these clustered functional dependencies. And the question is, well, how do I split this? And really for guidance on that, I have to look at the universe of data that I have. I don't know which way to split, right? So we have basically this um, one way we can split. We can say, look, if I want to split on this parcel ID, alderman, township ID, so I want to split on that functional dependency, I split my land records table into this thing that's parcel ID and township. So there's this parcel information and this township information. Or I could say, no, I'm going to split on that other set of functional dependencies. So I have this parcel ID and township ID, and they have a township ID and the information associated with it. So what we're doing is saying, well, does the alderman go over here with this table? Or does the alderman go over here with this table? And the way we decide that is deciding how the alderman is assigned. If it's the kind of municipality where there's one alderman for a township, then the alderman has to go over here with the township. But if you have an alderman that can basically go across several townships, the alderman has to go over here with the parcel. So again, it gets back to the structure of the data, the universe of the data as when it's properly assigned as things can be. And so here it depends on, well, really, what are the properties of the alderman? How is it assigned? Um, because you can have municipalities where it can go either way. For example, the city of Minneapolis, there are wards and there is an alderman for the ward. In the city, some other cities, you have like Washington, D.C., you can have at-large aldermen that go across several or all of the wards. And so then the alderman would have to be assigned to the parcel, right? So um, if they're assigned across several wards. So you have to look at what the data allow, what your conceptualization of the world, how the assignment allows them. So, you know, which is correct, you gotta go back to the data itself. Um, and so again, we're saying it's like Minneapolis where you have a parcel in a ward and also so no parcels can span two wards and you have a alderman assigned to that ward and so we would go this way. Um, so anyway, the tables depend on the functional dependencies as they occur. So we'll basically have our set of tables. In our case, we're, the tables are going to be this way because 
the alderman is assigned with the township, and these are our final tables. And so we can combine the table back in any way we want. We can get all the information associated with the parcels. And this we have this key set of um, connections here that we'll, we'll use in this key functional dependency table. So bad things are um, relational tables, repeat or similar variables, multiple dependencies per record, repeat records, or many blank cells. And we avoid that if we go to third normal forms because um, it gets rid of all those, right? Again, in the normal form summary, there's no repeat columns. We split the table so that they're all non-key attributes or dependent on the primary key, and then we split them further to get rid of these functional de dependencies, these transitive functional dependencies. So this is where we go to first normal forms, then to second, and then finally to third. If you don't have your tables in these normal forms, then your joins may not be correct. You may get garbled data, or you may get joins that are non-consistent. And so normal forms are a really good thing, and that's why it's good to understand them.